Hello everyone, welcome back to ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. The Facebook users protest Thailand government after block the Facebook. More than half a million Thailand Facebook users join this group on the site created by a critic of the king. A new group creates after Facebook blocked a previous imitation under pressure from the Thailand government. Facebook says it is compelling to comply, but will mount a legal challenge to Thailand government. Hours before the restriction, Pavin Chachaval Pongpong, a self-exiled academic and prominent critic of the monarchy, set up a new group with a similar name that has gained over a half million members in one day. Just because I, I, was, I was extremely upset and then angry at the same time. Because I know that these people, they were, they were also fighting alongside me. Okay, okay, maybe it might be in a different context, in a different situation, but, but they know what I am standing for, basically for the promotion of, of, of the freedom of expression, to be able to express so freely. And they are now become a part of those people who are blocking this. Okay, people said that if they want to close it down again, then I'll set up another group because I am free, I can do it, you know. So uh, if, if this is, you know, to promote, uh, freedom of expression than I would. The move by Facebook this morning to sue the Thai government making the process a little, a little more difficult now. So people might think that if they can close the first group, they can do with the sec second group. Yes, it is true. But, but the fact that Facebook now came out to sue them, making them think twice, whether you know, they have to go to the trouble to close this for the second time, and then Facebook would come out again, it would become a legal, a new legal proceeding, unending. And knowing also that Pawin would never stop upsetting a new group. I don't know. I try to think positively about, about whatever happened. Yeah. He adds that the setting up the group also emboldened the young protesters and also created a new environment of like-minded people where people are not afraid to discuss the monarchy in public. So I would like to say that whatever we have in the group, you know, help embolden them. And, and, and on top of that, this is something that I'm very proud of. It creates a new environment, a new environment of like-minded people who just come together for someone who might not be able to comment on, on the monarchy, maybe because they fear, maybe because, maybe because they are ill-equipped about the issue. Now they see a lot of people who think similarly. So I think they give each other a kind of moral support, explaining to each other what you don't understand, then I can let you, I can explain it better for you, something like that. So I think this kind of moral support in a new environment help build up a new kind of culture. And I think that culture now spread to the student as well. I mean, this is something that, that I am so proud. Of. Hours after blocking the group, Facebook says it will legally challenge the Thai government. A company spokesperson says requests like this are severe, contravene international human rights law, and have a chilling effect on people's ability to express themselves. Thailand's least majesty laws forbid defaming the king with penalties of up to 15 years in prison and often form the basis for requests to block or remove content on social media. Thailand students holding up three fingers salute in schools. Pupils at more than a dozen Thailand high schools raised three-finger Hunger Games salute during the national anthem in a sign of spreading support for student-led anti-government protests. Demonstrations begin on university campuses in an increasing challenge to the ruling establishment in the Southeast Asian country that dominate by the army and the monarchy. Videos on social media shows high school protests during morning assemblies that begin at least in eight schools. Some students also wear white ribbons to show their support for protesters who seek Prayut's departure, a new constitution, and an end to the harassment of activists, also called for reforms to the monarchy, once a taboo subject. Prayut tells reporters during news conference that he is willing to listen to the students but questions the motive of some. <laughs> I see the honesty from the students in regards to the events occurring in the schools. On the other hand, I heard from some students that those who don't want to take part in these actions get bullied into doing it. Whoever doesn't join will not be included in activities or clubs. I think this could be dangerous. <laughs>
อะไรล่ะถูกกีดกันถูกไม่ให้เข้าชมรมเข้ากลุ่มอะไรเนี่ยผมคิดนั่นคืออันตรายนะครับ Protesters accuses Prayut of holding on to power unfairly after elections last year and the rules drawn up by his junta. Apart from the political demands, some pupils complain of a school system which emphasizes obedience and tradition, from lining up daily for the national anthem and strict rules on uniforms, haircuts, and behavior. High school students says they are planning for a protest, including one at the Ministry of Education. Papua New Guinea denies China's national participate in a COVID-19 vaccine trial. The Australian newspaper says as the Pacific nation battles a worsening outbreak of the respiratory disease, the workers due to fly from the northern city of Tianjin to the Ramu Nico plant in northern Papua New Guinea run by state-run Metallurgical Corporation of China Limited. The Australian says David Manning, Papua New Guinea's head of disaster management, denies access for the workers after tell of the vaccinations and sent a strongly worded letter to China Ambassador Xu Bing. In Beijing, Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lizian tells in a regular briefing he is not aware of the matter, adding that he believes China's vaccine development strictly follows a standardized scientific protocol and that safety and effectiveness evaluations as well as ethical inspections are carried out in the research process. I'm not aware of the relevant situation you mentioned. What I want to emphasize is that China vaccine research and development strictly follow standardized scientific protocols and strictly carries out safety and effectiveness evaluations and ethical inspections. At the same time, in accordance with legal provisions and international common practice, the emergency use of vaccines can be carried out on the premises of scientific evaluation and verification approval in accordance with the law and voluntary use. China and Indonesia formally launches FastLine arrangement to ensuring epidemic prevention. China and Indonesia formally launches a fast lane arrangement to facilitate personal exchanges for the purpose of ensuring epidemic prevention, maintaining the smooth flow of industrial and supply chains, and helping each other's economic recovery. The arrangement are announced by the Chinese State Councilor, the Foreign Minister Wang Yi, and Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi during their meeting for the talks in the Boating Li and Miao Autonomous County. Wang says Retno is the first foreign minister to visit China in the post-pandemic era. The visit of the two ministers not only showed the importance of the Chinese-Indonesian relations, but also marks the resumption of the foreign minister's offline diplomacy. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic ties between China and Indonesia. China is ready to work with the ASEAN countries to ensure the signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Redno gave one a letter from Indonesian President Joko Widodo to Chinese President Xi Jinping, saying that Indonesia fully agrees to maintain good exchanges between the two countries and is committed to working with China to safeguard peace and stability in the South China Sea. Japan reports more than 900 new cases of COVID-19. According to the health ministry and local authorities says, confirmed COVID-19 cases in Japan increased by 984 to reach 62,046. The figure excludes the 712 cases from the Diamond Princess cruise ship that was quarantined in Yokohama near Tokyo. The health ministry also says there are currently 243 patients considered severely ill with ventilators or in intensive care units. According to the Japan's coronavirus task forces, the resurgence of the virus which began in the country has already hit its peak. According to the data released by Okinawa Prefecture U.S. military base Seoul, five new infections, bringing the cumulative total at the military base to 361 cases. The Lanchan and Mekong Lake Corporation to open new chapter. Chinese ambassador to Cambodia Wang Wentian says both cooperation will open a new chapter as the third the Lanchang and Mekong cooperation is around the corner. One makes the remarks in a signed article published of the website of China's embassy in Cambodia. China, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand and Vietnam jointly established the Lanchang Mekong Lake Cooperation in 2016 to promote sub-regional cooperation. The six countries share the same river, the Lanchang River in China and the Mekong River when it flows to the other five countries before emptying into the sea. Priority areas under the mechanism include 
interconnectivity, production capacity, cross-border economic cooperation, water resource, agriculture and poverty reduction. Wang says the third Lanchang and Mekong Corporation's leaders meeting to help the countries to further strengthen mutual trust, deepen cooperation in various fields and promote the socio-economic recovery after the pandemic. In the future, China will work together with other countries under the mechanism to expand new areas of cooperation. The ambassador says the Chinese side looks forward to the third Lanchang and Mekong Corporation leaders meeting to make future layout for the Lanchang and Mekong Corporation, hoping it will become another milestone in the development of the cooperation framework. Malazi begins inquest into that of Aristine Nora Kuairing. An inquest into the death of Irish teenager Nora Kuoiring begins after her body was found in the Malaysian jungle. Kuoiring had gone missing on August 4, 2019 from the Dusun Jungle Resort, located about 80 kilometers from the capital Kuala Lumpur in the state of Negeri Sembilan, where her family had been staying while on holiday in the Southeast Asian country. Nora is our first child. She has been vulnerable since the day she was born. She is so precious to us, and our hearts are breaking. We are appealing to anyone who has information about Nora to help us to find her. The police have been working extremely hard to bring Nora home. In order to help their investigation, we have decided to offer a reward. 50,000 ringgit has been donated by an anonymous Belfast-based business for any information that directly helps us to find Nora. Her disappearance from the resort prompted a massive search operation with hundreds of rescuers scouring the forest surrounding the resort. She was found dead 10 days after she went missing. According to the Deputy Inspector General of Police Mazlan Mansour, Koirung was found naked beside a small stream about 2.5 kilometers from the resort. Dan sampai saya lebih kurang uh, pukul uh, uh, dua setengah, sampai dua setengah, dua dua puluh itu, uh, dan telah mengetahui. Just now around 2.30 p.m. local time, we found a body, a women's body, with white skin, but as of now we cannot confirm the identity of the body. We have contacted the forensics and pathology team to investigate and determine who it is. Dan, uh, saya punya forensik dan sebagainya, pathology pun kita telah uh, hubungi untuk pergi melihat uh, mayat tersebut. Nak, nak, nak mengesahkan siapa punya mayat tu, eh? Dan pihak keluarga telah mengesahkan. The family bring in to identify the body and confirm that the body is indeed Nora Ain who went missing on August 4. Pada hari bulan yang, uh, yang lepas. An autopsy found that she had died of internal bleeding and starvation and ruled out full play, but her family has pushed for an inquest, insisting that criminal elements were involved. The South Korea reports biggest rise in coronavirus cases since March. South Korea reports its highest daily rise in novel coronavirus cases since early March. Tougher social distancing rules may be needed as outbreaks continue to spread from Seoul, Charge and other gatherings. The Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports 397 new infections that brings South Korea total to 17,399 infections of the new novel coronavirus with 309 deaths. Recently, we've been having more than 300 patients for three consecutive days. It's not just happening in the capital area, but in 17 cities and provinces nationwide. We are in very grave and serious situation facing a nationwide pandemic. 네, 먼저 어, 오늘 확진자가 거의 400명에 육박했습니다. First, we almost have 400 patients today. We don't see this as a peak. We think we will see more cases. It is because there are still many exposed people who haven't been tested. 어, 노출자 중에 검사가 안 열어진 부분들도 분명히 있고. The government extended second tier social distancing rules, which in place in Seoul to other areas of the country, banning in-person church meeting and closing nightclubs, buffets and cyber cafes. Health Authority says they may eventually deploy the toughest stage 3 social distancing rules where schools and businesses are urged to close if the rate of increase in the new infections does not slow soon. The strong quake in Philippines kills one person and damages quarantine center. Ah. A magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake struck the Philippines, killed at least one person, damaging roads and buildings, hospital and sports complex being used as a novel coronavirus quarantine center. 
it is a strongest earthquake which lies on the ring of fire and seismically active belt of volcanoes circling the Pacific Ocean. The video obtained by Reuters in Leganes, which lies more than 420 kilometers away from the epicenter, show household items at the residence shaking, while images taken in Masbate province closer to the epicenter show damaged buildings and roads. According to the European Mediterranean Seismological Center, the quake struck at sea at a depth of 30 kilometers, or 18.6 miles. The Philippine Seismology Agency says there are no risk of a tsunami but warn off aftershocks. Vietnam and China commemorate 20th anniversary of land boundary delimitation. China and Vietnam held an event in the China-Vietnam border in Dongxing City to commemorate the 20th anniversary of drawing the China-Vietnam land boundary as the 10th anniversary of setting up markers to demarcate the border. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, Vietnam's Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Pan Bin Min attended the event. Wang stresses the need for the two countries to enhance cooperation. China will spare no efforts in promoting China-ASEAN economic integration. We shall tap the potential of the border areas between China and Vietnam to promote regional cooperation. We will further align the Belt and Road Initiative with the two corridors and one economic circle plan in the border areas. We will continue upgrading ports and opening up wider. We will develop areas of cooperation focused on cross-border tourism and border economy. We will facilitate the flow of personal, goods and capital to inject vitality into the regional economic cycle and promote cooperation between China and ASEAN and make contributions to economic integration in the region. The two foreign ministers checked the boundary markers together, trace characters on each country's markers in red, respectively. China and Vietnam friendly border cooperation to push bilateral comprehensive and strategic cooperative partnership to a new level. Thank you for today. Have a nice weekend. We'll see you soon.